I hope everyone's having a great day. Today we have a 2015 Chevy Silverado, a 3500 Duramax, and we have a uh, reductant fluid temperature sensor code. No surprise. And you can see this old girl right here, she's got 331,000 miles on her. And this is the code we have. We have a P205B. When I know I've made videos about this before, it's kind of hard to see. We have the P205B, which is reductant tank temperature sensor performance. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna check and see what the actual temperature reads. And I've already seen it, but we're gonna test this a different way. I'm not gonna show removing the tank in this video. Um, I've already done that before. I've done, a, I think, a few of these, at least two, removing them. But this time we're actually gonna test it. I'm gonna show you a different way to actually properly test it. Um, I would say 99% of the time, it's actually the sensor in the tank that fails but sometimes it can be the module on the tank. But this is the way to test it so that you know with uh, a good certainty that you're going the right way. Uh, the scanner's slow today. So we have reductant temperature right here. We have a 257 degrees. This truck has actually been sitting here for, it's sat here overnight. So it hasn't been running, it hasn't moved. Um, and obviously we're not, uh, we're not sitting on top of a fire right now, so it's not 257 degrees. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the tank real quick. I'm gonna show you how to check it so we can diagnose this properly. So as you can see, we got the tank out. We're getting ready to test. I got my multimeter. Um, I have it in continuity right now. That's just the way I use it. We'll change it as we need it. Um, everything's just hanging out down there. This module wasn't even put back in place, which is nice. This is the sensor module. This can go bad too. Um, that's why we are checking it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and pop this clip out. Then this is the one that goes to the uh, reservoir. This is the heater slash, it has the level sensors and the, the temperature sensor in there too. So got some dirt in there and it says, according to the wiring diagram, let me just double check before I tell anyone the wrong thing. Contain, okay, yes. So according to my wiring diagram, the black and the white wire, which is pin two and pin three, of this connector is our uh, temperature sensor. So it's going to be pin two and three, which are these two right here, because we got one, two, and three. I'm going to assume that, even though I don't see any numbers on there. I don't see any numbers, but that's our only black. We're just going to go right to the back. And then we're going to see where our resistance is. We're open. So I apologize about the glare. Right now we're at 320 ohms. I got out the big one, just to be sure we're good. And according to this, uh, 320 ohms looking through the camera about 176 degrees so we'll just double check it real quick 83 84 so definitely needs a uh, sending unit and then we got to retest after that but because there's no way to test this module but we know that something's definitely going on in this sense it's sending unit right here so I just got the tank back in. Uh, right now we're gonna check the temperature, see where the temperature's at. I haven't even checked it. I, it could have, I might have not plugged it on the way or something, but we're gonna find out right now. Everything should be done underneath. It's all put back together. So we're gonna go data display. This is a different scanner, because I'm gonna have the uh, another guy drive this for me real quick. Once it's all, once I verify that this temperature sensor is working, and let's make sure. So, it should be somewhere around 90 to 80, 90 degrees. 93, if you can see. Uh, I'm going to get off of it. It's this one right here, right under the white line, reductant temperature. Sorry about the jumpy camera. Reductant temperature, 93 degrees. So we're in the golden. Um, I just posted a short. This actually had a Dorman, um, the sending unit inside the tank. They call it a reservoir kit, reservoir module, whatever you want to call it. Had a Dorman. Now, it looked pretty old, and to be fair, I'm not a fan of Dorman. Dorman stuff is just garbage for me. Anything electrical is garbage. Even their plastic, I mean, everything they make is garbage. There's a couple things they make that are good, but anything electrical or plastic is usually junk. Now, two, three years ago, when the pandemic started with the COVID-19 stuff, um, we did have a really difficult time getting parts for this. So, like, that sending in it was on national back order for a few months. I had trucks waiting here for them. So I actually put one of those in a long, long time ago. Um, we let the customer know it is what it is, you know. I, I can't have a customer's work truck down because 
we can't get a part. At least we can do is throw a part in there, see what happens, and hopefully it gets them down the road for a couple years, and it's well worth the money for them to just get it running, get it back on the road so they can get back to work and making money, you know? So I get it. Um, ideally, if the factory part's available, please go with the genuine. I know people like to think that it's all the same crap, but I can almost, pr I can promise you it's not. Um, I would say 95, 99% of the time, the, uh, especially Dorman, is just, just Dorman crap. It's all Dorman, just cheap Chinese or Taiwanese garbage. Um, aftermarket wise, you are able to find some good parts here and there. It just really depends. Um, you know, like for example, I, I sometimes Duralast, I, I'm not a big fan of Duralast stuff. I had a Ford that needed a uh, purge solenoid or a vapor management valve. Uh, Ford, it was on uh, like a back order temporarily for a few weeks, I think it was at the time. The customer needed the vehicle and the valve was broken. So we ended up, uh, I couldn't find one. Nobody else had one. Nobody had a Motorcraft one. And so what I did, I ordered one from AutoZone. They actually had one in stock up the street. I put it in my hand, it said Ford right on it. So sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. But in that case, you know, it was a good part. But just please, please, please try to stick with the factory part. This aftermarket stuff is just ridiculous. You know, especially electrical components, electrical, you've got to stay as close to genuine as you possibly can. I know it's a lot more money, but I promise you it's less of a headache at the end. Especially when you put an aftermarket cheap part in there and then you have to take it to somebody because it didn't fix it. And now you've changed three parts and now you're stuck because you put all cheap crap on there. I, I see people do it all the time and it's like we got to put your original stuff back on so we can actually do our testing because they go on Amazon to buy stuff for 10 bucks. But hold completely off the subject. Um, this truck so far seems good. Temperature's good. No codes. Um, remember, no aftermarket parts. Just going to say that. Let's just double check the temperature one more time and then uh, she'll be ready to rock and roll. And I will post a tab up at the top to link to my uh, video of the uh, of replacing the tank because I didn't show that in this part. I just showed the diagnos diagnosing it. So, um, yep, yeah, let's see what we got. If it's still within our, our realm, then we are good to go. Let's make sure. 93 degrees, so we are perfect. So, thanks for watching. If you like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks and have a good day.